Hi, and happy new year, everybody. Happy 2024. Today, I want to make a video commemorating 2023. It's been an amazing year. A lot happened to me, and I am feeling a little sentimental about the whole thing. I am someone who likes closure, so I would like to wrap up the year by highlighting all of the most interesting things that happened each month. So I'm gonna try to get through each month of 2023. If you've been following me for a while, then you know that my life is constantly changing. I am always in new places, and I am about to end my Canada chapter, where I have spent the last six months. So I'm in my feels a little bit about endings, and beginnings and I don't want to close the book on this chapter without giving it a proper send-off if you will and if you're anything like me and you also like a little bit of closure before diving headfirst into the next crazy adventure then hopefully you will appreciate this video so I'm going to start with January and go through each month quickly and hopefully put up some video clips from some of the things that I'm talking about so that way you have some visual reference to what I'm saying but you can always find the full videos as well as the uncensored version of the full videos on my OnlyFans and my Fansly. Starting in January, New Year's Eve, this time last year, where was I? I was in a small backpackers town called Trevelin in Argentina, where I rang in the new year with some locally crafted brew and Mario Kart, which had just come out the Christmas of that year. Um, and that was really fun, but it was only the beginning of my Patagonia journey. So shortly after that, I drove further down south to get to southern Argentina, full Patagonia. And I spent like a week and a half in El Chaten, the castle yes. of Argentina, <laughs> which is just a backpacker's paradise. I did some of the most mind-blowing hiking in my entire life. Like, pinch me, I still don't know if the things that I saw are real. If you get the chance to go all the way to Argentina, you have to make the extra trip to go all the way to Patagonia. And once you're in Patagonia, you have to make the extra, extra trip to get to El Chaten because it is absolutely worth checking out. And you've gotta do Laguna de los Tres if you go. It is like an alien planet out there. Just, it is what the Patagonia clothing company modeled their logo after was the mountains in El Chaten. So it was really cool to be able to be among those huge rock formations and countless glaciers. January is also my birthday. So I spent my birthday last year doing a tour to Penguin Island um, where I got to see hundreds of penguins multiple different species, including the and King Penguins <laughs> were there. So yeah, I started the year off with glaciers, trekking, wildlife, and remote, harsh climates far off places around the world. Where were you last year in January? <laughs> it was also summertime down there, so the weather was completely different. And then in February, I went to Chile and I did a whale tour there where we took a boat out to, again, like far off islands where we saw more glaciers and huge whales. Um, they were humpback whales, I wanna say. And we saw sea lions and seals, tons of birds. It was um, an unforgettable trip. It was so beautiful, so worth it. I spent quite a bit of time in that region um, Punta Arenas region of Chile, which was the, the southern most part of Chile. Um, and I dealt with a bit of work burnout at that time. Good morning, everybody. I am a grown ass woman that bought myself a stuffed animal. <laughs> yes, I did see penguins on this trip, but also it just looked so cute and cuddly and I couldn't resist it. It just seemed like the ultimate comfort blanket, which is something I've really been needing lately. But it could have also been travel burnout, which is to be expected if you are, you know, hiking insane mountains and 
constantly moving houses. I was in a new place like every week at least. You know, I'm on an amazing adventure and my lifestyle is so beautiful and I'm very privileged to get to travel the world and live like a local in all of these exotic places, but I got a little burned out. Um, trying to get along with people, learning a new language, you know, I was being challenged in so many ways in South America. And I did learn a lot of Spanish, but it was still challenging, you know, when you're not totally fluent, there's only, there's like a threshold of how close you can get to somebody. So I was feeling isolated and I was feeling lonely, you know, I was at the literal bottom of the world <laughs> by myself, working a lot because, you know, as much as you guys receive friendship and companionship from me and as much as my content makes you feel, you know, certain feels, my connection to you guys and like the relationships that I've built on these sites, that also makes me feel whole. It makes me feel less alone because yes, I do deal with loneliness as well, just like so many of us in this modern world. Um, my connection to you guys has meant so much to me. So yeah, sometimes I work a little bit harder than I should, but you know, it just, it feels like I want to. It's the right thing for me. It makes me feel good. It's really overwhelming. And I'm just gonna show you what burnout looks like for me. <laughs> Don't get scared. I'm gonna fix this, but this is where I'm at right now. But I have learned that I have limits with that. And I've learned a lot about boundaries with myself from this period in February and in March, to be honest. Um, it lasted a couple months. This burnout, not that I stopped creating or that I stopped working, like I was always doing stuff because, you know, you have to keep moving. But it was like emotionally draining to do anything. And for a couple of months, I didn't hike a lot. I did a little bit, but I didn't push myself very hard. And that is also when I started therapy for the first time which was a unique experience. It was online with a counselor in California and I'm in South America and, you know, I did like a little bit of an interview process with her, but we're very different people. And I felt like I got a lot out of it. It was nice to be able to just talk to somebody and just be honest and unfiltered. But yeah, I feel like there was only so much that I was gonna learn from this particular person. So that ended. I started to feel a lot better after that though. I was making big strides once I booked a plane ticket to go back home. <laughs> once I knew that my time traveling was going to come to an end in May, I was feeling a lot more optimistic. I was feeling motivated to get outside again and I did a lot of hiking. I went to the volcanic region of Chile, which was so, so gorgeous. Probably one of my favorite places during that whole six month trip to South America. I think I could put up with the risk of such an explosion to look at beauty like this every day, wouldn't you? because where there are volcanoes, there is also thermal waters. So I visited quite a few hot springs out there. I'm a hot spring enthusiast. So that was really exciting, kind of gave my travels a little bit of new life to start my hot spring hunting journey all over again, which is something that I used to love doing when I lived in my camper van in the United States. Chilenos are just some of the most kind people I have ever met. They are so sweet, so humble and welcoming. I've had some of the most amazing hosts on Airbnb in Chile. And Santiago is the capital of Chile and it's a really great city. Hello from the beautiful city of Santiago de Chile. It's a gorgeous city nestled in the mountains. 
the Andes Mountains. It's maybe a little bit big, like right in here. I don't quite fill it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a glorious place. All right, comment below and let me know which outfit you like the most. And I'll see you in the next video. Um, it's very clean compared to a lot of cities, very beautiful, rich in culture and history. Um, and as far as city folk go, Chilenos in Santiago are extremely kind. They're also very vegan friendly there, so if you're plant-based like myself, you will have all of the plant-based options your heart desires in Santiago. You can have whatever you want to eat there. But nonetheless, I was very excited to go home. So I spent all of June home with my family, just taking it easy, de-stressing, letting my mind go from all of the worries, all of the planning. Me and my sister took a really great week-long trip to Miami, just the two of us, which was so what my soul desired at that time. I craved sister time so badly. Fit check, Miami day one. My little sister and I had an amazing time last weekend in Miami. And for anyone who's wondering, yes, we are full-blooded sisters. We are Italian and Puerto Rican, and she certainly looks like it, but I guess I got the recessive genes. The older I get, the more important I find family time to be, especially with my sister. She's my best friend. But spending that quality time with her really just reset my mind 100% after all of the traveling stress and I felt completely like myself again. There is no cure for loneliness like being back with your tribe, whether we're talking about your family or your childhood friends or just people who truly know you. That is, hmm, it's getting me choked up just thinking about it because I am craving that again. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen my family. Anyway, July, I went to Canada. I was like, all right. One month with family, I'm good. <laughs> For the most part, we did mostly legal things here in Vancouver. And now I'm here in the big city and the world is my canvas. I can do whatever I want here, but I feel like I grew as a person more than I have in a while. So that's good, we love progress.